chocolates that you got tonight. These are creations by Chef Brule. Uh, she is awesome. She is located in Roswell. She is local. Uh, she's got a tiny little shop behind, uh, what's that hamburger place? Um, the, the Lucky Dog. Yes, Lucky yes. Dog. Yes. Uh, so right across from Pure Taqueria in Roswell, um, behind the Lucky Dog Cafe, uh, she's got a little, little space there tucked back away. Um, if you're not looking for her, you're going to miss her. Uh, so you have to go there on purpose. And she does amazing things. She does custom chocolates. Um, she does all kinds of crazy flavor chocolates. Uh, she's amazing. You can tell by the shapes that she's very creative, uh, but also uh, delicious. This is our third year doing our wine and chocolate pairing with her. So we're uh, really happy with everything that she's done. We love her products. Um, so if you are in Roswell, if you need some chocolate and who doesn't need chocolate, uh, go see Chef Brule if you have any special occasions. She even does corporate. Like I've seen the first time I went in there, she showed me this logo. Uh, she did a chocolate bar in the logo of a corporation that hired her to make these chocolate bars that they handed out to their uh, staff. So um, really, really awesome. And go support her as always. Support local every time you can. Uh, we thank you guys for your support. Um, and getting us through a crazy year and we're almost I think back to a place hopefully where we can start doing some in-store tastings again we're, we're thinking like you know uh, late spring early summer hopefully um, where we can start doing that but until then uh, we have the zoom tastings we love the zoom tastings I hope you guys do too uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and if we have any latecomers they can join us as we get started. Uh, so Chef Roulet just told you about her. She's awesome. There's her uh, website information, um, founded in 2008, and she's doing awesome stuff. Uh, and she has as much passion about chocolate that we have with wine. So it's a, a great connection. It's a great pairing. And we are excited to show y'all how the wines and the chocolates go so well together. It's such a beautiful pairing. I think wine and cheese and wine and chocolate are the two <clears throat> most beautiful pairings in the wine world. Excuse me, I just got dry throat <coughs> for a second. Uh, and it's so natural. And, and when it's done right, it can be so ethereal. And it's beautiful because it's two very simple products. Now, a lot of work goes into them and the labor involved in chocolate, the labor involved in wine, the labor involved in cheese uh, that goes on behind the scenes before you get that product is definitely there. But as far as just the simplicity of a piece of cheese and a glass of wine or a piece of chocolate and a glass of wine, that's where the beauty is and how they interact with each other, how they play with each other. We love it. So uh, just a couple basics on wine and chocolate pairings. If you're trying to do this at home or if you're going through uh, and, and I will say as we get started, um, if you want to leave a little bite of each of the chocolates uh, as you're going through the tasting, if you can have that self-restraint and save a little bite of the chocolates and go back and pair them with other wines to see how they interact with the other wines that are in the lineup. That's a really, really fun exercise to do. If you don't, I completely understand, uh, but that is fun to do. And, and with cheeses as well, you know, if you're going to do a meat and cheese platter and have a couple different wines, try them all together to see which ones pair the best. Um, so in general, you want to seek a wine that is sweeter in sugar than the alcohol or the, the chocolate that you plan to eat. Uh, if you don't like sweet wines, you can make adjustments there. Similarities attract light chocolates, light wine, dark chocolate, fuller bodied wines. And when you're going and tasting progression, you're going to taste light to dark, just like in a wine tasting so that the flavors don't overwhelm the wine and chocolate that's coming after them. So. Uh, with that being said, without further ado, let us get into this beautiful pairing of the lavender caramel or caramel, whichever you choose to say. I like caramel. You might like caramel. That's fine. No judgment here. You can say what you want. Uh, paired with the Flora Prosecco. Now, 
with the tasting real quick uh you want to always taste the wine first before you taste the chocolate take a little sip of wine then go to the chocolate and then go back to the wine in that order you're going to get the best pairing possible uh so the reason we thought this pairing would work and hopefully we're going to be right we know we are because we already tried this out um the prosecco has a floral note that goes really well with the lavender and kudos to Aaliyah. she picked all these pairings tonight she created this slide deck uh so make sure you let her know how amazing she did with all of this um and so the reason we thought it would work uh floral note on the prosecco uh complement the lavender bubbles always pairs great with a lot of things um and balances out the the creaminess of the caramel uh other wines that could go with this chocolate muscat late harvest white wines riesling moscato which is a bubbly that has a little bit more sweetness to it uh and vinsanto which is a late harvest dessert wine from italy um about the flora well first let's let's get into the pairing uh so take a little sip of the flora if you haven't Take a little bite of the chocolate. And then. This is the not clean feed. As the chocolate is still in your mouth, take that sip of wine. Let the two be in your palate together for a little bit. And then once the chocolate has left, Go back to the wine again to cleanse it and let those flavors mingle. I love the way that this brings out the lavender and also the bubbles cleaning the palate on the back end of this pairing. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think it uh, it, it, it comes together beautifully and it really is almost a seamless pairing there's some pairings that contrast this is definitely not a contrasting pairing this is definitely a complementary pairing where the two work in conjunction with each other to make the other better um and we'll talk about comparing and contrasting because we do have uh a pairing that kind of brings out a different element of the two pairings but this one just beautifully and complementary or beautiful and complementary um, so a quick note on the wine itself. This is the Flora Prosecco, new to the shop uh, for about a month. I think we've had it in the store and we've fallen in love with it. We do have an entry level Prosecco, the Bellafina at $13, and this would be our step up at $19. Um, it's beautiful price point, beautiful flavor, beautiful label, uh, everything that you would want from a true DOC Prosecco. So this is from the Col de Luna area in the Prosecco region. If you don't know, Prosecco is the region. Glera is the name of the grape. Uh, it's in the Veneto in northern Italy, and it's probably, other than Champagne, the most well-known of the sparkling wines. Uh, the difference between this and Champagne is that Prosecco undergoes a secondary refermentation in the tank versus in the bottle. For Champagne, the secondary fermentation has to happen in the bottle that creates the bubbles. For Prosecco, that secondary fermentation takes place in a large tank, creating the bubbles and then bottled. This is fermented on native yeast, so they're not adding yeast, uh, in stainless steel, um, and very, very natural and no additives uh, and no manipulations to this wine. Uh, a lot of the Proseccos that you see in that 10 to $15 range are highly manipulated and uh, very mechanized production um, versus artisanal production. Uh, lots of additives, possibly some chemicals, uh, lots of, you know, things that they do in the winery to produce a million cases of that blue label wine that you all love that you don't want to know what is in the bottle actually because there are millions of cases of it produced a year and the only way you can produce a million cases a year is by commercializing the production is the nicest way to say that um so the other things that you can pair this with in addition to this beautiful chocolate uh seafood 
I love Prosecco or bubbles with fried seafood. So think fried calamari, fried shrimp, Frito Misto. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful pairing with those items. Um, coconut curry, tiki masala, salads, fried foods we hit on, sushi, nachos, fruit. Really, sparkling wine and rosé are the two most versatile food pairing wines on the planet. If you've heard me talk about food pairings, you've heard me talk about this before. If I'm ever stuck in a pairing conundrum or a pairing uh, quandary, my go-to to get me out of a jam is bubbles or rosé or both, uh, bubbly rosé. So if you're looking for something that's super food friendly, uh, always go to bubbles. It's a great way to start the evening. I, you know, I think it was either Lauren or Leah said the other day, I can't remember which one, that they now crave bubbles every time they come home. And it's so true. It's such a great uh, way to start the evening, um, finish the work day, cleanse your palate, get you ready for food. It's not high in alcohol, so it's not going to put you on your ass. Uh, you can have a glass before you go to dinner. Uh, you can have a glass uh, Aaliyah gave me a funny look for cursing on the Zoom call. Um, you can have a glass, uh, you know, before five o'clock, even some days when it's called for. And this Prosecco, we love. Come get a bottle of it. I hope you love it. I hope you love the tasting. At the very end of the slideshow, we are going to ask for the favorite tastings. Uh, so try to keep that in mind as we're going through. Again, if you put uh, if if you have any questions, you can put those into the chat function. Um, we will be checking that through the tasting as well. Uh, for those of you who've joined late, good to have you. Great to see you. Um, all of the chocolates are provided by Chef Brule, uh, and we're going to get into the second chocolate and wine pairing here, which is this beautiful division rosé of Gamay and the milk chocolate truffle. So uh, milk chocolate truffle, it's this one on your screen. So the uh, psychedelic flowers, yellow, pink, I love it. Um, really, really beautiful. Actually, the, the, this chocolate I think pairs better with the flora from the label standpoint, uh, but this is the one that you wanna go to for the rose. Yep, see the floras uh, or the flowers, the flora flower. Um, so the reason we thought this pairing would work when we were thinking about it going through it uh, in the pairings, you always have to think about it before you actually try it to find out if it works. Um, this rosé has a little bit more body. It has a little bit more fruit. Uh, the acid isn't super high. And so it should be a really great balance with the milk chocolate, the creaminess of it, the sweetness of it. Um, and as you're about to find out, it does. I'm going to finish up my uh, Prosecco real quick and move on to the rosé. While he's finishing that up, I will say two things. One, uh, obviously, we've touted how beautiful this Prosecco is. And I guess I shouldn't say more, but this is one I t have taken home multiple times. And I tried to only take home a wine like once because, you know, education. But this is one that keeps coming home with me for whatever reason. Um, with this, with this rosé pairing, I was a little nervous. And with all the wines we're tasting tonight, technically, I think they fall in the dry category. So the less than five grams per liter of sugar. And I know that we told you guys on that very first slide, in general, you should be pairing your uh, chocolates with wines that are sweeter than them. But majority of wine drinkers don't prefer a sweet wine. They prefer a dry wine. And so even though the internet will tell you the rule is to find a sweeter wine than the chocolate, sweet and fruity can kind of be interchanged here. And that's kind of what we did is we pursued wines that even though they are dry in sugar content, they have the fruit to balance with the, the sweetness of the chocolate. So, so, you know, grain of salt. Do what makes you happy, live your life, live your dreams. Okay, Adam. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Um, and so uh, again, try the wine before the chocolate, take a bite of chocolate, go back to the wine, finish the chocolate, take another sip of wine and think about the flavor components. Think about the way it interacts on your palate, the way it interacts uh, with your taste buds. 
uh, other wines outside of rosé that you could do with this, fruitful Rapina Noir, other light-bodied reds, a Lambrusco or Sangua de Judo, which are sparkling reds from northern Italy. Um, and, and sparkling reds are another one that people forget about a lot, especially the drier sparkling reds. Very, very food friendly. And we've got some fun ones in the store. Uh, a lot. We actually have a lot that could have gone with these pairings um, that we didn't go with tonight, but landed on this one. And I love the pairing. I think, you know, when you get that milk chocolate in your mouth and then you take that first hit of the rosé, it's almost like you just ate a chocolate covered strawberry. Like it's just so perfect and so juicy. That fruit hits the chocolate just right. Uh, it mingles together with it in just the right way. And it's very, very harmonious. Uh, and it almost is seamless where the wine and chocolate begin and end. And, and that's always a fun pairing is where they just completely interact with each other in such a beautiful dance, uh, which is what is happening here in my mouth, at least. I hope it's happening in your mouth as well. Um, so uh, Gamay Noir, 100% from Columbia Valley, single vineyard from the Carousel Vineyard, uh, destemmed immediate press. That means they pull the grapes off of the stems and immediately press it, uh, separate the juice into four steel tanks to ferment at different temperatures. So they're kind of playing mad scientists with this just a little bit. Uh, and then pairing with fresh fruit, salmon, chicken salad, rare lamb, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. Again, rosé, such a versatile wine. Uh, and Division Wine Company, we absolutely love. A few of you have probably tasted this before because we have featured it a couple times on our tastings now. Uh, and if you know us, you know we love Division Wine Company and everything that they do. And we've got some really amazing wines from them in the store right now. We have a beautiful single vineyard Cab Franc from them, Malbec blend. Uh, I think we have one bottle left of the Gamay Pet Nat Rosé that they did uh, that was just absolutely delightful. We have their Chenin Blanc, we have their Chardonnay, we have their Pinot Noir Un, the Beton, uh, and they might be making an appearance in our Pacific Northwest tasting as well. Uh, so just stay tuned for that one in a couple weeks. Um, and if you haven't discovered their wines, discover their wines because they are up and coming. Their wines are super hard to get. Uh, and as with a lot of our other producers that, you know, three years ago, we could get a lot of, um, they're blowing up. And we're going to talk about that a little bit when we get to the next wine, because I just found out some information that made me sad, but at the same time, happy for the producer. Um, if you don't know this about us at Fermented, we really focus on small, hard to find, more naturally produced wines. And that wine scene is starting to blow up all around us, not only in our store, but all around the country. And these wines that we feature and the wines that we carry are getting harder and harder and harder to find. Now, there are new producers every day coming up. So we're looking for the newest producers uh, that are going to become the cult producers. But a lot of these guys, we're not getting a whole lot of their wines because not a whole lot's made and it is in such high demand right now. Um, so I got off on a tangent there. Uh, I apologize. Um, I hope you love that tasting because I absolutely love that tasting. Uh, and now we're going to get into some dark chocolates. Now, this was probably the hardest one of all the chocolates as far as a pairing goes. And we could have gone a lot of different ways. But I really like where we went and how we landed on it. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to like where we went and how we landed on it. But we're going to talk about it just a little bit. And we're going to talk about bitterness just a little bit because bitterness is a very polarizing flavor profile. And depending on how you grew up, depending on where you grew up, depending on what you were exposed to, your threshold for bitterness is going to be a little bit different uh, if you grew up in Italy, your threshold for bitterness is very high uh, because you're drinking espresso dark. You're drinking, eating dark chocolates. You're eating umami foods. You're used to bitter, bitter wines, bitter foods, radicchios, things like that. If you grew up in the United States, your experience is much different because we have what we call a Coca-Cola nation. 
And those of us from Atlanta know exactly what a Coca-Cola nation means. And it's the reason that U.S. wine consumers are more attracted to wines that have apparent sweetness, even if there's no sugar in the wines, but apparent sweetness, because it's more familiar. It's more understandable. It's what we're used to. And so getting people to move from those big, rich, heavy, high alcohol reds that have that sweetness and have that perception of sweetness, the Coca-Cola palette, moving towards that bitter palette, it's a progression. And, and not everybody wants to go there. And that's fine. Not everybody has to go there. There's wines for everyone out there. And hopefully you know that we try to have something for everyone, no matter what your palate is. But I love this pairing because I'm a bitter guy and I like bitterness and I like uh, that flavor profile. Um, and so we're going to get into how that happens on this. So this is the dark chocolate truffle and this is the Brock Love Red. And it does have juicy fruit. It does have medium body. It does have a softer finish and it does balance with the bitterness of the dark chocolate, but I love how they play and interact with each other. And again, with this wine, uh, taste the wine, taste the chocolate, then taste them together, then taste them together again. Uh, the other way you could go with this is, uh, you know, a sweet sparkling red, uh, sweet port wine. There are ways that you can tame the bitterness, but I love that we brought out the bitterness in this pairing. All right. Well, and as little, if in, oh, case sorry, Aaliyah, go ahead. in case people didn't see my chat, say as hard as this will be to do, save a bite of this chocolate because in regards to what Adam just shared, we want you to try this chocolate with the next wine as well. So you guys can see the difference of how different wines will bring out different aspects of each of these chocolates. Um, so this is a classic dark chocolate that doesn't have any additional flavors. And the final one you guys will be trying is a uh, black currant dark chocolate. So we want you to save a bite of each to try with each of your wines. So you can see which of those, you know, sing to you for different reasons. Mm. Mm -hmm. And also I really, yum. I really like that. Um, so real quick on Brock. And this is what I was alluding to earlier with these wines getting harder and harder to find. So we opened the store with Brock Love Red on our friends and family tasting three years ago. We've had it in the store since we opened and we've carried every single Brock product that has come to the state of Georgia in the last three years. And we are the number two retail store for Brock wines in the state of Georgia behind someone else who has three locations. Uh, we've only got one location and we're number two. So if we had three locations, you can bet we'd be number one, which hopefully we will have three locations at some point in time. Uh, now, Brock is out of California and he was one of the first natural California producers. And when we say natural, we mean no additives. We mean no manipulations. Uh, letting the wine speak, lower alcohols, more nuance, and more terroir driven. So that's Brock. Now, what I just found out today that really saddens me is I found out that his rosé showed up today to the state of Georgia, the Love Rosé, but we can only get four cases this year in total. We got about 20 last year. We got about 40 the year before that. This year, we're only getting four cases. Uh, and it's because he's blown up in the last three years as a winemaker, as a cult producer, we call them. There are so many people trying to get his wines uh, that he just can't produce enough. And, and he will never produce enough. So now we have to find the next Brock the next Chris Brockway, uh, because we're only getting four cases of his rosé this year. And his rosé is amazing. There may be another drop later on in the year that comes around, but we're not guaranteed it. So if you love Chris's wines and if you know the rosé and know how amazing it is, uh, you need to come get it. It will be showing up on Friday. We'll get our first three cases uh, on Friday, just in time for Valentine's Day. And then we'll be getting another case the following week, 
but that'll be it. And it's it's only February, and we're already out of the Brock Rosé. It's crazy. Um, also, 2020 was a difficult year for California, so that's a little bit of a factor of it as well. Um, we also found out we're only getting one case of the Sinsky Vingri Rosé this year. Um, there's only eight cases coming to the state of Georgia, uh, and we will be getting one of those cases, but that's it. And that's something that we usually get five or six cases of a year. So uh, <clears throat> I got off on a tangent. Let's get back to Brock, Brock Love Red because this is his workhorse and this is the highest production wine that he makes and the one that we're able to keep in stock most often. Uh, it is a blend, Carignan, Val de Guy, Syrah. Uh, Val de Guy is a very little known grape from France that is growing in popularity in California because it drinks a lot like Pinot Noir, Val de Guy and Trousseau, if you ever see those. Uh, they're great Pinot Noir alternatives. The grape comes from 70-year-old vines in Solano, Solano County in Green Valley and a little bit from Mendocino as well. Uh, Chris only works with people who are practicing organic and biodynamic, so he cares very much about the vineyard sites that he's uh, getting fruit from. Very involved in the farming practice and in the pruning practice of his wines. Uh, and very, very hands-on. The lots are fermented separately. They're aged in a combination of neutral French oak barrels, concrete tanks, uh, and this wine is a great Pinot Noir alternative. It's light, it's elegant. Um, to me, it mm, is very reminiscent of uh, a French Pinot Noir, and you get, so, I love the way that it brings out the good parts of the bitterness in the wine. Um, it's not too much. It's not too intense. Uh, on that back end, you just get that little almost espresso-ish uh, flavor profile. And I love the fruit, the way it mingles with that dark chocolate. And I think it's a really, really beautiful pairing. I'm not a sweet guy. I don't have a sweet tooth. Well, I, I do sometimes, but it's not very often. Um, I would rather have savory for dessert. And so the dark chocolate and then the interplay with this wine is something that really makes me want more food. Um, it makes my mouth salivate. It's almost, this is going to sound crazy, but we could do dark chocolate and Brock Love Red as an appetizer and then move on to the main course. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna do this at the beginning of the meal and then finish with a rack of lamb. That's my plan. Well, that sounds like a fun dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will, and I can say guys, I have personally tasted this wine with pizza so I can verify 1000%. It is excellent with pizza. Just as an aside, I did that research for you. You're welcome. Um, and Adam touched on something that just a lot of the time when, let me just go there. Um, when people come to our shop for the first time, usually the grape varieties that people are familiar with are kind of the big two, Pinot Noir and Cabernet Sauvignon, which are on the opposite sides of the body spectrum typically, but there are so many fun grapes in between. And I love what Adam touched on here about how this is a great alternative to Pinot Noir with grapes that probably some of you have not heard of before. Uh, and that's kind of the value of coming to independent retailers like us is we can walk you through, if you're looking for something that's like a Pinot Noir, but maybe your price point isn't a typical Pinot Noir price point, we definitely have alternative suggestions for you that can be just as good, if not better. So that's um, a small plug for shopping small local independent retailers, if I may. Yes, and a great plug. Uh, and, you know, our number one and number two selling wines in the Pinot category are actually not Pinot. Uh, it's a Longue Rosso from northern Italy that drinks like a Pinot. Uh, and it's the Brock Love Red that drinks like a Pinot. We, we've got great Pinots, too, um, from Willamette, from Burgundy, from California. But there's such a wide variety of light-bodied reds that aren't necessarily Pinot, just like there is such a wide variety of full-bodied reds that is not Cabernet. There's a bunch of other ones out there. And so even though we may not have a lot of Pinots in the room, we have a lot of light-bodied reds. 
and even though we don't have a ton of Cabernets in the room, we have a lot of full-bodied reds. So we're really trying to get people to think outside of varietals and regions and think of styles and think of uh, body and weight and finish. Those are the three things that matter the most. What body you want, what finish you want, and what style you want. Um, and then from there, there's so much exploration that we can have in the store. Uh, all right, on to the final pairing of- the I wanna email. see how many hands, who saved a bite of chocolate, just in case, who did? Or who already ate all the chocolate? Oh, I'm seeing some shaking heads, I love it. Okay, great. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so now we are gonna get into Zinfandel and another dark chocolate, but this dark chocolate has a little bit of dark or of, of black currant. I don't know if it's a jelly or a jam, but it is really, really beautiful. Um, black currant isn't something that a lot of us are familiar with. Uh, it is a fruit um, and it's used a lot in cooking and it's referred to a lot in describing wines, but not a lot of people have ever had a black currant. So this is fun, delicious, uh, and a great little wine. So the reason we thought this would work uh, is the red is dark, it's rich, and it's full-bodied. It's a Zinfandel with a little bit of Petite Syrah in it. Although I will say it's a balanced Zinfandel with Petite Syrah. It's not over the top. It's not gigantic and huge in fruit and richness. It doesn't have any residual sugar in it. It's a well-balanced Zinfandel and Petite Syrah blend from a great winemaker who we'll get to when we get into the nitty-gritty of the wine. Uh, and so it has flavors that are complementary to the black currant as well as the dark chocolate. It does have a little bit more richness. It does have a little bit more fruit to it. Um, other wines that you could pair with this, uh, Cab, Merlot, Zin, Syrah, any of those bigger red grapes, uh, and then Ruby and Tawny Port. So we didn't do a dessert wine on this tasting, but that's one of the classic pairings with chocolate is Ruby Port, dark chocolate, uh, tawny port, milk chocolate. Those are great, great pairings. Um, and we may get into, uh, you know, some of those at another point in time when we do another chocolate and wine tasting, which we do plan on doing more chocolate and wine tastings down the road. Um, so again, take a sip of the wine, take a bite of the chocolate. Uh, I'm going to do the same, and then we're going to get into a little bit about Mr. Nick Goldschmidt and why we love his wines in our store. Uh, the Fidelity line in particular, uh, fabulous entry-level wine and perfect label for those of you who are in a long-term monogamous relationship for Valentine's Day. Here, honey, Fidelity for Valentine's Day. <laughs> um Sorry, I'm being a little silly. No, I like it. I, I totally went. I totally get it. And it, you guys may have seen this a comparable label before in our store. We have had this uh, Fidelity Red Blend, which is 50% um, Merlot, 50% Cab. This is the Zimbabwe. So this is a little bit new, especially for this tasting. And um, I taken me by surprise. Amy, I, I kind of agree with you. This is a very fun pairing, but if you can, if you can be so strong, save a bite of this too. So you can revisit that love, um, Brock love red because the jam, the jam, the compote in this paired with the love is also really fun and brings out more of the fruit flavors in the Brock love. So that's the fun of wine and chocolate pairing here. You guys thought that wine pairing was fun enough. We'll add chocolate and we get a whole other layer. Yes. It really is. And Aaliyah's right. Um, this this chocolate pairing goes really well with both the Fidelity and the Love. It's actually, I think we could try a lot of red wines with this chocolate and they would all go really well with it because of the sweetness of that jam or what did you call it? Compote. Um, the, the, the current flavor in there mingling with the dark chocolate, it's already kind of melding together in those two and then you add the wine to it and it just really brings it all together uh so 88 percent zinfandel on this 12 percent petite syrah petite syrah and zinfandel really 
put together quite a lot in these kinds of blends. If you think about Prisoner, uh, one of the most famous of that kind of red blend style in California over the last 15, 20 years, that's what made it famous. Zinfandel, Petite Syrah, Charbono, uh, Syrah, those fuller body grapes uh, made into a modern style and then put together. The Prisoner was sold to Gallo about eight years ago, I think maybe more now, 10 years ago. So uh, that's not something that we would carry in the store, but we have a lot of wines that are similar in style. And again, I go back to that style. Uh, the style here is big, rich, powerful, soft, well-balanced, and those grapes, especially in California, are synonymous with that style. There are some producers that make a Zinfandel that drinks more like a Pinot Noir. Chris Brockway is one of those. Uh, Frog's Leap is another one that makes a very elegant Zinfandel. And so Zinfandel itself is not big and rich and powerful. Uh, it's made into that style by producers. When treated differently, Zinfandel can drink like a Pinot Noir. It can be very elegant. It can be very ethereal. It can have a lot less alcohol and it can have a lot higher acid. And so it's really cool to see different styles of the same grape. If you joined us for our blind tasting last week, you saw that with Syrah. And we want to continue that conversation because I really feel like that's a lot of the confusion that comes to the wine consumer because you have one Cabernet that you really like, and then you have another Cabernet that you don't like that much. And the reason is because it's a different style. So if we get off of the grapes and we get off of the regions and we go to style, I think you'll have a lot more success in figuring out what you like and what you don't like. Uh, these vines were planted in 1982. So this is a single vineyard wine that we sell for $23 in the store from Sonoma County, no less Alexander Valley in Sonoma County. So you have single vineyard, Alexander Valley, and this wine is just beautifully balanced. It has great fruit. It has a little bit of structure. It has really good acid. Uh, and it's $23 a bottle. Uh, Nick Goldschmidt got his start. Just a, a fun little fact. He was the winemaker for uh, Kendall Jackson. No, nope, I'm sorry, Simi. Uh, wrong, wrong person. I was thinking of Jed Steele for a second. Jed Steele was the Kendall Jackson winemaker. So Nick Goldschmidt was the winemaker at Simi for years and years and years. And in particular, uh, he made their high-end single vineyard wines. Um, Simi is a brand that started boutique and then blew up and sold out just like a lot of them do. Um, and, and no, no disrespect intended. You got to do what you got to do. And everybody has different philosophies in life. Um, but that's where he got his start. And that's where he uh, learned how to make amazing wines. Um, when Simi got really big, he left the company and started his own uh, winery. He's from New Zealand uh, originally, and he makes some New Zealand labels as well, or some some wines under his label that are from New Zealand also. Um and he makes some really fantastic stuff focusing on Sonoma County in California as well. Uh, he has three daughters that he names a lot of his wines after. Uh, Hillary. Um, that, yep, my mind's going blank. I can't believe that. Uh, Catherine. Yep, thank you. And then Chelsea. Uh, so those are his three daughters. And he has a wine named after each of them. Uh, the most popular is the Catherine. You'll see that a lot of places around town. Uh, and it's a um, very popular wine. And it's his highest production wine. The Fidelity series, uh, both the Zin blend and the Merlot Cab blend, they're his only blends that he makes. Uh, and they're very, very small production in comparison to the other wines that he produces, which is why we chose to have those represent Mr. Goldschmidt in our store versus the other ones that you see a little bit more widely available. So uh, Nick Goldschmidt, awesome guy. We love supporting him. Uh, this wine has uh, 16 months in French oak, 15% of which is new. Uh, it is unfined. It is unfiltered, which means that it's vegan. If that word confuses you, why it's on a slide deck for wine, uh, it's because that a lot of wines, when they're fined or filtered, which is a process of removing particles from the wine, uh, they use animal products. So it's either egg whites, fish bladders. Uh, there's a couple other things that you can use as well, but those are the two main uses of fining and filtering. 
Um, and so if you are vegan uh, and you care about those things, you need to look for unfined and unfiltered wines because that's the only guarantee uh, that that wine can be vegan. It doesn't say it anywhere on the label and most wines aren't going to say vegan or non-vegan. So if that is something that you care about, that's something that you need to ask us about when you're selecting your wines. Uh, pair with grilled steak, pork, burgers, pot roast, chili, charcuterie, cheese, and of course this beautiful uh, black currant chocolate. Um, yeah, that's yummy. And I, I mean, I can still taste the flavors and, and uh taste the individual flavors, but also taste them together even a few minutes after drinking them. And I think I'm getting a sugar rush and a sugar high right now because I don't usually eat this much chocolate in one sitting. Um, <laughs> oh boy, Adam's going to be bouncing off the walls for about three minutes and then you're yeah. going to crash. And then I'm going to crash. Yes, I absolutely am. Um, mm. That's yummy. So, uh, all right, now we're going to take some feedback and we're going to do a couple things. We're going to get your favorite pairing and then we're also going to get your favorite wine, just standalone. So, uh, if you can put them in the chat function, Aaliyah will count them up for us because she is way better at that than I am for some reason. I don't know why I can't count very well. Uh, I use pen and a paper, and that really helps. That's probably why. I try to do it all in my head, and I get confused. Um, <laughs> all right, so number one, the Flora Prosecco and Lavender, uh, the La Aveyron Rosé and Milk Chocolate, the Love Red and Dark Chocolate, the Fidelity Zin and Black Currant. Uh, and while Aaliyah's tabulating those and why you guys are putting your uh, answers in there. And again, there's no wrong answer to this. And I love seeing this part of the tastings because uh, there was a quote that I read a long, 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 long time ago that really influenced my belief and my vision of wine and what ended up being our vision for the store. And that is that everybody has a different taste. Uh, whether it's art, cigars, wine, beer, liquor, food, music, anything that has a variance of components is going to be a very individual liking. And you should never let anyone tell you what you like is wrong. Somebody early on in our store said, don't yuck someone else's like. Uh, and I love that because what we like is what we like. There is no wrong in that. It's our perception uh, it's our enjoyment of that, and there is no wrong answer when it comes to it. I don't like country music, but somebody else does. Uh, I don't like sweet foods, but somebody else does. I don't like high alcohol wines, but somebody else does. Um, and, and the same can be said vice versa. You know, early on in the store, people will come in and say, what's your favorite wine? I said, it doesn't matter what my favorite wine is. You probably won't like it. I like really weird stuff. Uh, I like high acid. I like funky. I like dirty. Um, so you're probably not going to like what I like. We need to find out what you like. And that's the goal of fermented. And that's the goal of this journey of tasting, exploring, and trying to figure out what we like and what we don't like. It's also why we have 40 different wine club packages. If you're in wine club, you know this, we curate it specifically for your taste. Uh, but I don't give everybody the same wine in wine club because I think that's not a correct way to run a wine club. Uh, everybody has different tastes, so everybody should get different wines. Um, and we try to get to know you and put you in the right package. Uh, if you're not in wine club, check it out online because it's a lot of fun. There are a lot of wine club members here on the Zoom tasting uh, consistently every week. And hopefully they would tell you that uh, we do a pretty good job of trying to figure out what your palate is and then staying in that lane. Um, and then you can always change it. We love feedback. We love growth, uh, and everybody does change over the course of time of tasting and learning and exploring. All right, Aaliyah, what do we have? Okay, so for our, which pairing was our favorite? It was actually very close, but pairing number four eked it out by one point. All right, well, before you uh, do that, did you vote? Oh, uh, it eked it out by two points. All right, well, mine's number one. Does that bring us any closer? Then we are one point different. So, it, <laughs> so it was it, a tie. Between, 
<laughs> pairings one and two were the favorite yeah. and by one point difference. That's awesome. Love it. Uh, all right. Now, pairings aside, what was your favorite wine of the evening? Just stand alone with the wine, no food involved. If you had to choose what your favorite wine was of the evening, and this is another reason why we told you to taste the wine first before the chocolate, uh, what was your favorite wine of the evening? Uh, and I'll go through prices. I don't think we mentioned prices on all of these, but they're all very reasonable. Uh, 19 bucks on the Flora Prosecco, 25 on the Division Rosé, uh, 24 on the Brock Sellers Love Red, and 23 for the Goldschmidt Fidelity Zen. So all 25 and under, uh, all delicious and all very different as well. Um, I'm not going to say my favorite till the very end, but uh, I know which one it is. And I'm going to pour a little bit more of it right now. Um, uh, for those of you who got full bottle kits, just uh, an FYI, um, they will be good for the next two to three days. So don't feel like you have to drink them all tonight. You can drink them all tonight. And uh, if you do, um, I hope you have fun. Uh, but if you don't want to drink them all tonight, don't feel like you have to. You've got a good two to three days. Uh, just put the cork back in them, put them on the counter. If it's the rosé or the bubbles, put it back in the fridge. Uh, if you don't have a champagne stopper, you might only have a day on the uh, bubbles. If you have a champagne stopper, then you've got a couple days uh, left on the bubbles as well. Um, Leah, where are we at? Okay, so I think I've got everybody, and it is close once again, but the Prosecco seems to be everyone's favorite by nice. another close point. Yep, I love it. I'm throwing mine in for uh, number three, Brock Sellers Love Red, always near and dear to my heart and one of my favorite wines of all time. Yeah. What did you vote for, Miss Aaliyah? Oh, my sweet baby Prosecco. Mm -hmm. The best pairing mm -hmm. with nachos, you guys, in – just I know that's my go-to for those of you that attend this every week I always pair against nachos and pizza so yep. I will always let you know how things pair against those two things and they are great pairings uh now one quick question did someone pick at least one of these wines as a favorite what, what are you asking yeah, that was a confusing question. Um, so was there at least one person that picked each of these wines as a favorite? Well, the rosé actually had no stands. No tonight? Wow, that's Not crazy tonight. because it has won the tasting before in the past. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the, reason I, the reason I ask that is just uh, to prove the point that everybody's different. Everybody has a unique palate everybody has a unique perspective and everybody has a unique experience when it comes to wine. And in a different setting, that division rosé was the favorite of another tasting that we've done in the past. Um, in tonight's tasting, it was the least favorite and that's okay uh, because I still love it. I think Aaliyah still loves it. And as we get into rosé season, uh, I guarantee you that it's going to be great on the patio on an 80 degree weather day. Uh, which we almost had today. I can't believe that it got up to 73. That's absolutely crazy. Um, and so I hope that you guys had fun. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed the chocolates. Check out Chef Brulee. I hope that you enjoyed the wines. Um, and on that note, uh, if you guys ever have the time to go online and give us a positive review. Uh, we can use all that we can get. Um, we've got great reviews online, uh, but as more and more people are seeking great wines and trying to find new places to find wines, uh, online reviews are a really big source of where people go to find their wines. So if you have the time, give us a review. Uh, if you're not a wine club member, join wine club. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the shop soon. I hope you all have a wonderful, amazing, exciting Valentine's Day. I know this is 
a weird one. Uh, last Valentine's Day, we weren't quite into COVID lockdown yet. Uh, so this will be the first Valentine's Day that we are experiencing in this uh, new semi-normal as it would be. Um, so have fun. Try to forget about everything that's going on. Enjoy your loved one uh, or loved ones if you're celebrating with multiple people, not multiple yeah that one really sideways really quickly um celebrate it with your family your friends uh whoever you're celebrating valentine's day with make sure you're drinking great awesome. wine uh and we really appreciate this <laughs> we really appreciate everything adam can you tell us what the faves were again we were yes distracted drinking and eating and talking oh you're good, Amy. Uh, so the favorite wine of the evening was the Flora Prosecco. That was the winner. Uh, okay. And the favorite wine tasting uh, pairing was the last pairing, the Zinfandel and the Black Blackcurrant uh, chocolate. Yummy. Yep, it was really yummy. Um, so you guys have an awesome night. Uh, thank you again. Hey, Adam, us. one more question. Yes. The Chocolatier, that is on Old Alabama Road near Holcomb Bridge, right? Is that the where you got the chocolates? I don't no, think it's on Old Alabama. It's on uh, Highway 9, right across the street from uh, Pure Taqueria in Roswell, behind Lucky hey, Dog hey, Cat. Amy, hey, Amy, I think it's within walking distance from our place. Probably. Oh, I was just thinking, we're way too close to Chef Brulee. <laughs> yeah, That's a lucky spot to be. Yep. We'll have to run there. That works, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you, you drink a bottle of wine on your way running there, grab yeah. the chocolate, run home, and have some more. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely check her out. Uh, I'm sure she's pretty busy this week, but um, she's got a great storefront. Uh, her hours are, are pretty reasonable when you can go in and check it out. And she always is very generous with her tastings as well. If you're in the store, she'll let you taste some chocolates. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so, uh, yeah. You guys have an awesome night. Have an awesome weekend. I hope to see you Thanks soon. Well. And we really appreciate all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.